Okay, thanks, Dan. And uh, thanks uh, for uh, asking me to coordinate a bit uh, this uh, round table. During this uh, round table, uh, well, we'll try to, well, uh, to share uh, some uh, uh, some experiences uh, on uh, what helps and what limits uh, the use of natural language processing in psychology and the social science. So we'll have uh, six uh, colleagues that uh, will uh, briefly share uh, what, um, what uh, they did uh, with respect uh, to that. And then uh, we can, uh, uh, they, they can of course uh, um, uh, answer some of uh, the, the, the questions. Uh, but the, the idea is uh, later, uh, after the six uh, presentation, uh, to try to um, discuss, uh, you know, the topic uh, from a broader perspective uh, altogether. So the participants are uh, Olesia Koskova, director of uh, SILA, associate professor at the Department of Sociology, Sociology at the St. Petersburg uh, School of Social Science and Humanity and uh, she has a PhD in uh, sociology. And then uh, we have uh, Polina uh, Paniceva, senior researcher fellow at uh, SILA, uh, the same uh, university in St. Petersburg, uh, and uh, she has uh, a PhD in uh, philology. Uh, Larissa Mararitza, uh, senior researcher fellow at SILA as well, uh, PhD in social psychology and uh, she's uh, an executive uh, committee member at uh, Human Tech. Uh, Natalia Lukacevic, leading researcher at uh, uh, Lomonos of uh, Moscow State University. And uh, she has a, a PhD in uh, computational linguistics. Um, Tatiana Litinova, head of uh, Rus Pro uh, Profiling Lab, uh, Borosnet State uh, Pedagogical uh, University, PhD in philology. And also Sergei Sharov, uh, um, who is uh, joining from uh, uh, UK, the University of Leeds. So we start uh, uh, with uh, Olesia Kostova. Uh, yeah, Paolo, thank you for, for agreeing to chair this session and thank you for, for this kind introduction. I think I should, I would also, although Paolo doesn't need an introduction, I would like to say a few words that Paolo is full professor in computational linguistics in Polytechnical University of Valencia, and he is an outstanding and well, very well-known scholar in computational linguistics. And we are honored that for over a year he has been helping our lab and supervising our research in, at SILA. So um, <clears throat> I will now start sharing my my screen. I have pre prepared a presentation. That um, intentionally, intentionally, this is not a presentation of a specific project and its uh, results, but rather a polemical introduction into the topic. I will try to, yeah, sorry, to make it full screen. Just a moment. <clears throat> like this. So um, our lab is very interdisciplinary and we have um, people from different different fields including sociology, psychology, sometimes we have political science people and media studies people, uh, but also linguists, computational linguists and computer scientists and mathematicians and we're working together on interdisciplinary projects that involve a lot of different things, but, but among, one, of, one of them is applying machine learning, computational linguistics uh, methods uh, or results of usage of, that, of those method, uh, methods to the goals in social science and psychology. And this is never, this is never easy. So uh, one of the, Um, okay. Um, here, I just, I'm just giving a, a, an, um, a number of typical interdisciplinary tasks that we may face, 
And uh, for example, we have just finalized the project on hate speech detection. Why is it social? Because hate speech itself is a social uh, concept uh, that that sociological concept, if you want, that, that should be somehow detected uh, by, by using computational linguistics methods. The same is about deceptive content, for example. Uh, these are the features of texts that, that, that um, are typical tasks in social science and political science that you would probably like to be detected. But also, uh, features of, of people or, or even groups of people can also be the objects of detection for such uh, projects. In psychology, we also have a whole bunch of things you can detect with uh, from text data. Um, I have um, um, think about mental disorders. This is not a purely psychological <clears throat> concept, of course, but and also, of course, we cannot make diagnosis from uh, from just textual data. So we can just uh, make some screening research here. Yeah. So, and when we talk about these tasks, it uh, um, occurs that these concepts are are very different from, say, um, image recognition tasks or um, part of speech tagging or, or or named entity recognition, which are much more um, pronounced and much more clear, much clearer concepts than what we find in, in sociology and in social science and um, uh, even in psychology. So um, <clears throat> these phenomena have specific features, of which I will briefly overview, but also linguistic markers of these phenomena also have specific features and they cause a number of uh, problems. Um, first is uh, reliability of measurement. These, even if you assume that the features exist in, independently of human mind, um, it, there is no direct access to them, especially this is uh, um, a problem in, in psychology, but I believe that um, Larissa will address it to some extent. Um, when you give a, the same test to the same person in a while, you will get different results, and it may mean actually different things. Uh, just mere uh, uh, unreliability, but also the change of a psychological state, or um, may even question the very existence of the phenomena that are being measured. And then there is a question if we are not sure what we are trying to find out, then how can we be sure of everything else? Then there is subjectivity. There is no doubt that hate speech uh, exists in human uh, mind because it has very real social consequences. But uh, if you give the same test to different annotators, different people, uh, they will diverge. And this divergence, well, you can see an example from our recent paper that hopefully will be soon published uh, on hate speech de detection. So and the, this real divergence is not because of poor performance, not always because of poor performance of, of annotators, but due to their different visions that in turn may depend on quite a number of meaningful uh, things like their gender, their own ethnicity, their emotional state and emotional sensitivity and other things. <clears throat> and there is a, a number of things you can do. We often find that ambiguous uh, items are just excluded from, from, um, from the research. And this is basically what we have done here in this paper. But uh, this is not probably the most meaningful way in terms of social science. Um, there is a number of approaches. We can try to predict ambiguous cases with models trained on, on uh, cases on which annotators do not diverge. We can try to predict probabilities, not classes. And finally, we can try to predict distributions of human opinion over, over items, which makes things more difficult because you need much more uh, annotate as much more people if we are if we are saying that there 
uh, divergence is meaningful and reflects some social phenomena, this makes annotation similar to sociological polls. And this um, brings us to the problem of um, meeting the requirements that usually are addressed to such polls, like making a representative sample of those who are asked and giving many items to each person and many uh, and annotating uh, each item by many persons so we get a meaningful distribution. And finally, uh, concerning the um, um, the, the, the feature of the phenomena we're trying to, um, to, to detect is <clears throat> there is normativity. That means that some of social phenomena exist only so far you share a certain um, set of values, social values, beliefs, maybe religious beliefs. Uh, I will um, give you an example, a recent example uh, from Britain where a student was accused for of uh, being offensive and discriminatory and actually in, in making some hate speech based on a number of statements she made. And uh, if you read this, so she actually meant that uh, transgender women um, do not qualify as women and therefore they should do their competitions the sport competition separately from from real women why is this offensive so it only it is only offensive if you share some some certain vision of what gender is so there may be different value systems under in which uh, it is not appropriate to mention female genitals and very shameful if you are in one system you will be uh, accused of inappropriate behavior and incivility uh, just for mentioning that in another system it would be very right to mention this because it will it will be perceived as a struggle for for rights of women to mention their genitals still in another system it would be very very discriminatory to uh, attribute uh, to to assign a human being to female gender based on the genitals because transgender women can be should be also treated as women even if they haven't had an operation yet. So there is a whole bunch of, of value systems which uh, of which uh, depends the, 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 the result of whether we, we see a phenomenon of hate speech in this in this uh, particular case or we don't see. And the then what we are doing we have to teach uh, computers to have their values to share our our values. I think if we start teaching robots being being ethical and sharing some ethical and and, and moral rules for example religious um yeah and for example to kill everybody who doesn't share these religious rules how much time do i have yet i can stop in a moment uh, well it, it depends if uh, we wanted to be strict <laughs> i no. would say uh, can you can you hear me Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we I can can't. hear you, Pablo. Okay, no. Can uh, you hear me? Uh, not very well, yeah. at least uh, from here. So, I mean, it depends. If uh, we wanted to be kind of strict, uh, let's say that we should uh, wrap up, but maybe we can relax a bit and that will give you the time to, to finish with uh, no hurry. Yeah, I've got a question. When did you stop hearing me? No, no, I I could hear you. I mean, uh, the not uh, perfectly, but I can uh, hear you. Uh, the quality of the voice, for some reason, uh, is not great, but I can uh, understand. Heard everything. You. Okay, so so I was worried that, that there was no sound at all. Okay, uh, yeah, I will probably ask for for just a couple of minutes. So <coughs> to mention the. Um, the the um, the features of of linguistic markers of such social or psychological phenomena. Um, one is indirect uh, character of these features, and this is more or less obvious. Um, and depending on on the on the phenomenon we're trying to capture, it may be a whole 
range of uh, approaches to, uh, to express them. For example, in hate speech, we often have blame attribution. That is not like directly saying, I hate um, this ethnic group, but says, okay, let's now remember on which side Mamalizhniks, which is Belarusians, uh, fought in the Second World War. So here, they, the author doesn't even mention on which actual side, but, but, but it's clear that it's uh, blaming Belarusians of being allies of Nazi in the Second World War. We don't have any swear words here, nothing like that. And uh, it, it's extremely difficult to, uh, difficult to detect. And this is actually one of the errors, error cases in our, from our research where our algorithms failed. And uh, also contextuality, which means that to interpret a certain uh, statement and, um, and to assign a meaning of, for example, hate speech or misogyny or fake or propaganda, whatever we are talking about, uh, a, a person, a reader has to have sufficient uh, background knowledge. And if there is none, then, then the, 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 the statement will, will not understood, for example, as hateful. Um, the Russians should know the end of this uh, statement. If there is no water in the top, it was done by whom? Okay, it's a... Uh, do you hear me? Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, it's a swear word, meaning it Jews. So, um, there is no necessity, for those who know this verse, there is no necessity to mention it, then it will be very, a very, very subtle expression and still it can be clearly understood by those who know, but, but th those who don't know will not recognize, this, recognize it as hateful. And then uh, there is a question whose opinion is important. Probably the opinion of the target group members themselves is more important than the opinion of other groups. So, wrap up. This means uh, all that I said, that recognition of a social phenomenon in a text, for example, of hate speech in a text, depends on different things, such as language competence, background knowledge and education, uh, emotional condition at the moment and emotional sensitivity generally, that may also depend, for example, on ethnic background, if we're talking about ethnic uh, hate speech, and also values and belief, beliefs. So uh, my question for further discussion, when, when the floor is open for the discussion, is what can we do about it? And if anybody from the audience has any ideas or maybe questions or doubts, it will be nice to discuss this. Okay, should thank you. We, should we do or not? Yes, exactly. Well, uh, we can leave uh, these uh, broader questions uh, for uh, later. And mm -hmm. if uh, instead uh, there are uh, specific uh, questions maybe related uh, to uh, what, uh, I mean, some uh, aspects uh, of, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, presentation that uh, Olesia um, shared, uh, maybe it would be easier to, to make uh, the, quest the question now. Otherwise, uh, yes, we can address later this broader question, actually should uh, the way we if uh, we, whether we should act uh, in a certain way or we shouldn't and how, well, anyway, how to handle this, uh, this, uh, this problem. Okay, so if uh, there are no doubts uh, with respect to uh, what you just uh, share, I will uh, give uh, the, 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 the floor or uh, well, whatever we have uh, to give now, because we don't even move from the chair. Uh, to uh, Polina, Polina Paniceva, uh, also from uh, Sila. And uh, so Polina will talk about uh, um, how natural language processing uh, could help in predicting uh, psychological uh, well being, performance, but also, I mean, uh, she will uh, address the problem of uh, interpretability of the results. So whenever you want, uh, Polina. Yep. Thank you, Paolo. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now. Uh, 
so my talk today uh, will be more technical. I will tell you about our project on um, uh, predicting psychological well-being uh, with natural language processing as well. And I'd like to address the question of uh, how we can make uh, predictive models interpretable. Uh, so um, I will tell you briefly about the previous work that has been done in predicting psychological well-being from digital traces and uh, we'll briefly mention the motivation uh, for this work and for increasing the interpretability of such work. Uh, then I will tell you about our experiments on uh, predicting satisfaction with life, uh, which is measured with uh, a questionnaire uh, made by uh, Diener in 1985 and uh, subjective well-being, uh, which is measured by the World Health Organization questionnaire. Uh, I will tell you how we tried to predict uh, psychological well-being measured by these two metrics uh, based on digital traces of the users of uh, the social network of Contactia. Uh, I will briefly tell you about our experiment design our steps uh, that we took towards increasing the interpretability of the results and we'll tell you about the results in terms of prediction performance and uh, in terms of significant markers of uh, satisfaction with life and uh, subjective well-being. I will conclude and pay specific attention to some controversial questions. Uh, so. Um, uh, there have been a number of effective attempts at predicting psychological well-being. Um, not too many of them, though, uh, but they have been effective, uh, taking into account the fact that um, uh, it is very difficult to predict internal states uh, based on um, objective behavior measures. That is a correlation of 0.4 is considered very high when we try to predict internal states based on behavior. Um, moreover, um, psychological well-being prediction uh, can uh, allow us to screen uh, for various uh, physical and psychological health conditions uh, and allow for early intervention. But in order to be used uh, in such a health care context, uh, it is uh, indispensable that uh, our models are explainable. Um, in previous work, uh, there have been very few attempts uh, at um, explainability of the features. Um, there are four works on the predictions and only three of them report uh, at least some interpretable features, mostly LDA topics uh, connected with psychological disengagement and positive negative effect, uh, some profile characteristics of the social network users, uh, and a few um, lexicon categories uh, taken from the Luke dictionary. Uh, so um, in our experiment, uh, we have uh, tried to predict uh, satisfaction with life uh, and subjective well-being uh, measured by the scales by dinner and the World Health Organization. Uh, our data was obtained in collaboration with a human tech company and it included digital records of the users of Contactia and human tech mental health application, which is called Digital Freud. Uh, we use the profile information in Digital Freud and Contactia, uh, personal messages in Contactia collected over the previous year for each participant, and smartphone app data usage uh, collected for the last week. Uh, our features include demographics, profile and messaging data, and uh, overall phone app usage statistics. <clears throat> in terms of linguistic features, uh, we use words, uh, the Russian Luke lexicon features and topic clusters of words based on messages. Uh, also, we use uh, phone app usage statistics uh, with information about the app category. Uh, we have performed uh, regression and classification experiments in uh, tenfold stratified cross-validation 
uh, with training, development, and test sets. Our final prediction sample uh, is uh, quite modest. It includes 372 users. But additionally, we use a held out data set of users who lack some important variables, but who have uh, message texts. Uh, and we use the held out data set to perform preliminary feature selection. Uh, we did feature selection, <clears throat> first of all, to um, increase the interpretability of our results. Um, it is crucial that we have uh, quite a small number of predictive features uh, so that they are interpretable after we get uh, the results of the experiments. Uh, linguistic features, including words, can reach over 50,000 or even more. Uh, so we should heavily decrease the feature dimensionality. Um, that's what we did. Uh, the features which were high in numbers, that is uh, words and word clusters, uh, were selected in two stages. Uh, first, we performed pre preliminary feature selection on the held up data set, uh, reducing the feature set from over 50,000 to hundreds of features. After that, uh, recursive feature elimination was performed inside each cross-validation loop using train and development sets. And that allowed us to reduce the feature sets to dozens. Um, in our experiments, uh, we have, have obtained promising results uh, um, in both regression and classification. Um, in regression, we've obtained a Pearson correlation up to 0 0.4 for satisfaction with life scale. Uh, which outperforms previous results in the field. Uh, we also performed classification of uh, the WHO5 values. Uh, and for classification, we used the cutoff thresholds, which are specifically characteristic of various mental health conditions in our data. Uh, we obtained high results uh, in binary classification with the F1 uh, of the risky, the low well-being class, uh, reaching 0 0.77, and the true positive and false positive rates, uh, 0 0.79 and 0 0.4, respectively. Uh, just for illustration purposes, um, I'm plotting uh, our classification results on a receiver operating characteristics illustration of some state-of-the-art results in predicting depression based on Facebook data. Uh, our lower, lower class metrics in binary classification um, are shown in red, uh, situated uh, a little bit above uh, the Facebook-based uh, blue uh, receiver operating characteristics curve. Uh, and the trinary class uh, is characterized by the green dot, a little bit lower, but it is also above the uh, Facebook-based results. Um, <clears throat> in our work, uh, feature interpretation is crucial. And uh, here I'm illustrating some of the features uh, which were significant in predicting uh, satisfaction with life and subjective well being measured by WHO5. Um, surprisingly, there are very few highly predictive features which intersect for both satisfaction with life and WHO5. Uh, they are highlighted in bold uh, in the table. And uh, they include uh, the ratio of phone app usage time uh, between 9 and 12 a.m. in the morning, uh, normalized by total app usage time, and negative sentiment expressed in messages uh, during the last month of messaging. Uh, and these features uh, have positive and negative coefficients, respectively. Uh, the same for both uh, satisfaction with life and who five in the regression tasks. Uh, on the other hand, the features which are distinctive for life satisfaction levels uh, include um, a lot of words, which are sometimes obscene uh, and uh, almost always related to effect laden social phenomena uh, like quit, spend, fine, explanation, bully, spoil, sigh, nice. Uh, on the contrary, uh, for subjective well-being prediction measured by WHO5, more app phone usage features are significant, especially those related to the ratio of nighttime app usage, 
uh, that is between 3 and 6 a.m. Uh, also, um, words that is lexica related to, to biological processes uh, is a distinctive marker of uh, low HU5 levels. Uh, it is interesting that these findings are in line with the fact that uh, the HU5 scale is largely aimed at measuring physiological aspects of mental well being, uh, while uh, the satisfaction with life is more aimed at measuring overall psychological satisfaction, like being happy, finding one's life, uh, an ideal life, and things like that. Uh, this is um, represented in our significant features. Um, so I'd like to conclude my talk uh, saying that uh, there have been uh, a few attempts of predicting um, subjective well-being and even, even fewer attempts at interpretation. Um, up to 10 features um, are vaguely related to psychological theories. That's why, uh, that's how uh, the results are usually interpreted. Um, our experiments on predicting uh, subjective well-being uh, and satisfaction with life with digital traces outperformed previous results. Um, also, we obtained uh, quite similar regression results for uh, satisfaction with life and HU5. Uh, but it is important that uh, the significant features for satisfaction with life and HU5 were very different, which suggests that uh, different behavior patterns characterize the different scales. Uh, I would like to return uh, to the statement that to make screening based on the digital traces feasible, we need clear and unambiguous explanation. Uh, so we, um, for sure, clearly we need more research uh, to do that. Um, I'd like to return to my question of uh, how we can make predictive models interpretable. I'll be happy to hear your ideas. Thank you, Paulina, for being uh, concise <laughs> in time. Perfect. Um, so, yes, unless uh, there isn't any inquiry with respect to something uh, uh, more technical uh, you, you share during uh, your uh, short presentation, uh, I would leave uh, you know, the generic and important question for uh, later. Otherwise, we won't uh, have a round table, actually. <laughs> time for uh, the round table. So, yeah, so if there are no specific questions, I will uh, give the floor to Larissa Mararitza, also uh, from uh, SILA, uh, another senior uh, researcher fellow, and also executive uh, committee member at uh, Human Tech. Thanks, uh, Larissa. Basila. Thank you. Nice being here. and. Uh... As you said, I'm also a member of Humantic team, and now my team is with me. Here we have Pavel Novikov and Viktor Novichov too. So uh, we made a big work um, on reviewing a set of articles, recent articles on personality prediction and, and inference personality assessment. So, um, Nowadays, uh, some uh, commercial and uh, not commercial, but some kind of big players like Microsoft and others, uh, thinks that we can make inferred personality or email models like um, an alternative or a substitute for psychological tests for the con convenient uh, conventional, sorry, conventional psychological tests. So um, different digital services, for example, try to predict uh, personality of the person, try to predict motivations, try, trying to predict um, not only your mood and state, but some kind of stable characteristic of a person. And uh, nobody thinks is it really the same characteristic? Is it really the same um, personality, the same uh, features that we can have using usual psychological tests? 
So that's why we're doing research uh, on uh, 120 recent articles in the field of infrared personality. Uh, so we put together the subset of the studies uh, uh, which declare separation of training, validation, and testing phases. We compared the reported quality estimates and we complement the usual quality estimates with the psychometric approach to the properties of the predicted traits. And uh, we try to, uh, to focus only on the work that uh, is dedicated to stable psychological traits and uh, features of the personality. So uh, the first result is about the state of the field. We found out that it is still difficult to summarize progress in the field because of different metrics, uh, different uh, ways to assess the quality, and um, because of a uh, really very low rate of uh, papers that declare separation of training, validation, and testing phases which is crucial for ensuring the correctness of quality estimates in machine learning. Um, and uh, we found out that the most popular thing to predict is the big five personality traits. So this is the uh, most uh, usual, most common uh, personality uh, features that is uh, considered in the papers. So, and uh, there are two different labels. Uh, that we that researchers use to um, describe personality. They can use conventional self-esteem tests or objective psychological tests, or they can use uh, external external annotators or apparent personality to get uh, an assessment of the person's personality. So the benchmark is below. 0.5 in terms of uh, person correlation. This means that in all of studies that we can uh, look through and we can compare, make them in and can make comparable because it's quite a difficult task. There was no um, results higher than 0 0.38. Um, still, there are some higher results, but we, we can be sure that they are accurate. So for the apparent personality, for the situation when uh, we have an annotators, not the psychological test, to measure the light, the, the inner characteristic of the person, uh, the uh, numbers are higher. We, the quality can reach uh, 0 0.7 or even 0 0.83. In some uh, cases, for extraversion, for example, and um, this is this can happen due to the same uh, same data for the annotators and for the algorithms. In this case, not the inner uh, characteristic, not the self-esteem, but the same data for annotators and uh, the algorithm. But what does it really mean? Zero point five. Is it enough to use such kind of uh, uh, models in practice or in research or trying to think that they can be a substitute for the classical psychological tests. We find only one work on this uh, very important questions called work of Carlson and Herman. Uh, they try to uh, explain and understand what does it mean when we use the proxy of the trait that is correlated, for example, on 0 0.5 with the original trait. And they found, find a lot of cases, then this uh, correlation is not sufficient, sufficient is not enough uh, for us to be sure that they can uh, use the same description of the trait and, and we can uh, wait for the same uh, trade outcome uh, relationships. In our study, we, we make um, a simulated example of the case of uh, the measures of uh, the trade and proxy practice Kevin in relation 0 0.5. Uh, 
and we understand that we can explain expect large difference in the correlation with the outcome between the predictive and the origin trait if the prediction error is largely systematic and the particular outcome variable is related to the error term and this can be the true so um after the examination of uh, usual metrics, quality metrics, they turn to the uh, analysis of uh, psychometric validation that we found in, in this set of articles. So the first one is the content validity. This is the requirement for the indicators uh, to be interpretable, interpretable and theoretically justif justifiable. So the same like, Alina mentioned the same uh, the same uh, requirement to the um, indicators. So there is quite a huge amount of uh, knowledge about indicators and a lot of reviews on indicators. But uh, usually this is a post hoc discussion and post hoc analysis. Nobody used to make uh, preliminary pre um, at, um, make make uh, some hypothesis before the research and uh, only in one case we find uh, um, use they we find the situation then the authors uh, ask experts to um, distinguish the real the good uh, indicators and the bad one before the experiment before the model was made and uh, they found like just only uh, some of the indicators uh, was the same as expert was um, thinking. Sorry. So uh, the second is uh, reliability and factor structure and uh, the predicted and the relationships of predicted characteristics. This is very important thing for the psychological features, psychological traits, because uh, theory usually states uh, how the personality traits should correlate with each other. And usually authors skip this, uh, this type of analysis. They just um, never use uh, correlation matrix for, for example, five traits of the personality, but they can do so because uh, from the from the theoretical point of view, we know how they uh, should be correlated with each other. So um, from the very few uh, examples of such kind of analysis, we understand that um, the effective dimensionality of the predicted traits is lower than those of self-reported personality. But uh, the correlations retain the same correlation path like uh, pattern like uh, for the self-reported ones. And we have just modest results on cross-dimensionalizability and almost nobody tried to measure the reliability uh, of the predicted features in time. And the main validity is the criterion validity. Uh, because if you use psychological test, you want to predict something, you want to predict some outcomes, and you want to be sure that your trait will be correlated with something important to you. And uh, we have uh, found some um, interesting evidence that inferred personality uh, can be correlated with occupation, preference for a particular brand, or some psychological characteristics and decisions of a person. But the theoretical expectations are usually not clarified, and thus it is very difficult to understand uh, was these results uh, really um, um, really an evidence or just a demonstration of uh, some kind of uh, nice correlations. So the conclusion so far work is uh, that personality prediction using machine learning is a relatively new field of research. And it is possible to compile and benchmark for prediction quality, but we have no sufficient evidence to set uh, up clear expectations for the real world tasks. We don't know, don't know in advance which properties of the original characteristics will be exhibited by the predictive traits. We don't know, uh, can we uh, be, 
can we be sure, for example, for the correlation between extraversion and sociability? Uh, we can use the same uh, the same descriptions for the predicted traits like we use for the self-assessment uh, tests. And we can be sure that we have we will have the same outcome trait outcome correlations uh, for the predicted for the predicted traits like we do have for the self um, for, for the for, for the usual psychological tests um, assessment of the personality. So uh, I think this is the main conclusions and the main questions of uh, our research is how can we evaluate models of the personality prediction if traditional metrics are not sufficient. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Spasiba, uh, Larissa. So unless uh, there are no questions, doubts about some, uh, some of the things uh, you, you share with us, so I will move uh, from, uh, well, let's say St. Petersburg to Moscow. <laughs> I actually and, had one clarification oh, question. Yes, please. Um, do I understand correctly that in some studies, ground truth is not self-reported psychological trait, but uh, an external annotation of, by some other people? If so, what material do they annotate? And what is the, just the theoretical methodological justification of using such benchmarks? And who are these annotators? Yes, you're absolutely right. There are some studies uh, for the apparent personality. So like a first impression, for example, of the, of the person. So I can, for example, label a video or a text with the labels of extroversion, of openness, or the other psychological traits just by my experience, my point of view. And they do use a kind of two or three or five uh, annotators and they use the opinion on the demonstrated psychological traits, not the inner one, but the demonstrated one. And the name is uh, an apparent personality. And this is a usual type of uh, design for uh, video data, for example, a kind of interview data then they use both uh, visual and text data in one uh, um, data set. And this could be true for uh, photo, photos. And we do have uh, a table with uh, different data sets that we found uh, to be quite um, useful for the researchers. And we do have them in the preprint. We, we just, you can just look on, on this, um, uh, internet preprint and find the table with uh, all the data sets that was used in the studies and what kind of data and what kind of labels they use in these uh, researches. Thank you. But uh, from what I understand, uh, still uh, there is a, a certain uh, subjectivity, right? Yes, you're absolutely right. The apparent personality and the psychological traits measured by the psychological test is a very different things because the first one is not only um, uh, inferred from the test, from the self-assessment of the personality of the person, but uh, the second one is not only <laughs> subjective, but the, you just can... Uh, you use only the information that is in the data, then you an annotator, but then you use labels from the test, you use a kind of self image of the person is very, very inner thing, not 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 sure we can present it like this, the same clear way in their digital data. So that's why it's very difficult to predict such inner characteristics. And there are, we, 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 and this is very interesting thing. We never find no 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 researcher no no research. Then, sorry, we have haven't find a work with the annotators who uh, was the kind of real uh, expert in psychology. All annotators were like students or like some kind of um, Turk uh, Turk people. So so they just just 
crossing by just 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 no so they are not a specialist in psychology so we do not find the apparent personality research or try or, or attempts to predict the apparent personality that was annotated by the real experts so yeah implicitly the, the, we could uh, have a bias there depending on the annotators huge amount of bias. and the uh, huge amount uh, and there was a thinking maybe also on the basis of their personality, because uh, let's suppose that uh, by by chance, uh, by accident, uh, I mean uh, the annotators uh, have a certain, uh, all of them a certain personality. Maybe there is also uh, more bias to see the other the person uh, that they are supposed to assess from the same perspective. So I mean, a lot yes. of uh, variables there. Yes, they try to uh, use only, uh, usually they use the labels that is uh, convergent, so that, that converge in some point, not, not the, all the labels for, from the, all the annotators. So they kind of uh, use the, so, so they try to, to, to avoid some biases, but it is very difficult. But in the case of self-assessment, in the case of psychological tests, we do have a bunch of another biases. So it's, it's a very hard question. What is, what is better to predict? What is better to use to build a model that will predict the behavior of the personality best? So this is a very, very difficult question. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank so you. we'll pass now to Moscow. <laughs> Uh, I have a statement. Sorry, Paul. Yes. Uh, later, a... we'll pass it to Moscow. Don't don't worry. Uh, <laughs> I have a statement for everyone. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question in Russian, uh, you can share it with me uh, in a personal message, and uh, I'll say it in English uh, to the speaker. Uh, I will just use a minute to, uh, to say it in, in Russian. Uh, я призываю всех, кто хотел бы задать вопрос по-русски, uh, написать его мне в личном сообщении вот здесь в чате, uh, и я его озвучу по-английски. Спасибо. Uh, we have a race. Yes, exactly, Alexander. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. Uh, yeah. Thank you. For, uh, yeah, can I, can I ask a question? Of course, you yeah, can. thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the great, uh, I would say, preliminary report. And the question is actually connected uh, with the previous one. Yes, that's. Uh, did you take into account? Did you take into account uh, the uh, background of annotators in terms of their education, age? Age, you said that they're students, uh, but uh, did you have the frame for annotating? Uh, what were they instructed how to annotate? And um, I mean, in terms of place of living, their background, education, age. And uh, so then also, uh, of course, we understand that it may affect uh, your prediction sampling uh, in terms of bias in the long run. But uh, yes. did you have the, this set of conditions for annotating also to try yeah, to have a go at excluding the possibility of, uh, I would say, um, spontaneous annotating, like without thinking, just uh, make a click and then go ahead and make a click again. And so then that could affect the long advice. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for the question. So uh, actually this was a review, not the prediction uh, research by myself or my colleagues. So we just um, use the sample of the 220 rec recent articles just to understand the situation in the field. And in this data set, the data set of the articles, we find some articles that was uh, uh, about the apparent personality evaluation and prediction. And this type of studies uh, is very, very different from the first one. The first one is about self-reported personality, and the second one is about the parent one. In this uh, second type of studies, there was a different, different, different uh, type of annotators. 
but all of them was not an expert in psychology. This is a very important thing. We haven't found any research with very qualified annotators. So um, usually uh, there is a very, very brief description of the annotators. For example, like they were just a person from the um, platform of labeling, for example, or they was just a student, or they were just like um, available one annotators, and that's all. So they do not state something special about their background, about some about the place of living or something like that. So for us, it was impossible to uh, compare such studies, to compare the results in uh, terms of such um, annotators characteristics. So I cannot answer on your question so deep because we do not have so deep information on annotators and there are still a few good research on, uh, on the personality prediction because I've, as I have already mentioned, only 20% uh, of them really separate training validation and testing phases. So this isn't such a huge amount of good research to um, rely on. So I'm sorry, but I can ask on your question in, in more details. No, no, that's that's fine. That's good, good research, really. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, now we really have to give the floor uh, <laughs> to Natalia Lukancevic, if I pronounce her surname properly, leading researcher of a uh, uh, state uh, university. There is some noise. Um, I, sorry, I can't teach uh, the uh, demonstration. Uh, um, so her background is... Natalia, give you an access to share your screen. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks. Good evening, and uh, I also have a small survey, but uh, survey not very um, uh, advanced uh, research uh, as uh, presented uh, uh, in previous survey, but uh, it seems to me this survey is uh, very interesting, and uh, I describe uh, how social scientists uh, try to uh, work with NLP tools. They are uh, new uh, new users of uh, um, uh, NLP tools, uh, but they try to do topic analysis and the sentiment analysis. And uh, this year, I was uh, I, I I could see as a reviewer several uh, very similar paper from social scientists when uh, they try to. Um, uh, to do analysis of uh, topics and sentiments in their, in their sciences. And I would like to describe some patterns because, um, because uh, these uh, papers written by very different uh, people from different countries uh, were very, uh, very uh, similar uh, in, um, uh, in um, structure of papers. Uh, and um, maybe it's interesting to look how uh, how social to work with uh, NLP tools to 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 make them uh, useful. Uh, so um, uh, papers uh, which I uh, reviewed in several uh, conferences were related to topic and sentiment analysis and social sciences. As we understand, there are a lot of data currently, uh, and so social means work posts and uh, everybody can uh, collect uh, a lot of data. And uh, uh, I found uh, that uh, um, this uh, uh, very good uh, pre-processing, very reasonable pre-processing -pre is made. Uh, researchers, uh, social scientists, researchers are interested in recognition of uh, main uh, trends uh, and uh, try to use such instruments as uh, 
uh, LDR as uh, topic modeling uh, instrument. Uh, and uh, usually they try to connect this analysis with uh, user analysis or opinion mining. Uh, and uh, these uh, papers were submitted to NLP conferences, but in fact, uh, they are all um, uh, not accepted. And I would like to describe these patterns. It seems to me that uh, I don't know why uh, these patterns uh, spread in, uh, was, uh, in social uh, uh, sciences and uh, from NLP, it's uh, very uh, unsuccessful. Um, maybe at uh, professional conferences, uh, there are some influential papers uh, and uh, they, um, they somehow uh, repeated in uh, next papers, but they are strange from uh, more experience, experienced uh, NLP um, researchers. So uh, what uh, I could see uh, that uh, there is some uh, typical application of topic modeling. Uh, so uh, people are interested to extract uh, topics uh, that is group of uh, groups of uh, um, related uh, uh, words. Uh, they uh, usually use uh, some packages. Uh, uh, they described very complicated ways uh, to, uh, to, uh, to 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 select uh, parameters such as uh, alpha and beta uh, related to this uh, model. And uh, interesting pattern how they try to select number of topics. Uh, so uh, all three or four papers uh, I uh, reviewed um, optimize the number of uh, topics uh, using so-called topic coherence. Uh, as, as I understand, topic coherence uh, is uh, currently one of uh, um, facilities of uh, packages. So topic uh, coherence uh, uh, is uh, higher when uh, words in topics uh, are, uh, words uh, within topics uh, uh, have um, high uh, coherence in, uh, in uh, some uh, window in the same course. Uh, but uh, all, uh, all papers uh, that I could see uh, this year, um, uh, were optimized using coherence of topics, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, the uh, number of topics uh, was uh, very small, and uh, well, maybe four topics for the whole, uh, for maybe 30,000 uh, posts, uh, only four or 10 topics. So uh, and uh, when um, uh, paper when paper publish when paper publish topics uh, give examples give examples of these topics we can see that uh, uh, this coherence measure um, tends to to, um, to to select very similar very similar topics for example in one paper in one paper. Uh, they uh, showed examples. Uh, I, I, I decided not to show real real words, but only how uh, how this uh, um, topics uh, from what words uh, this topic topic um, uh, consists. So in fact, uh, people uh, so people uh, optimize uh, people optimize uh, coherence of uh, topics. So they obtain four topics and they think that these topics are good because uh, the coherence measure is very uh, very high but in fact uh, topics uh, uh, topics are very similar to each other and in fact uh, this topic seems to be one topic or not or not uh, four topics so but but people continue to analyze something try uh, uh, they uh, they um, um, draw some plots or visualization graphs and uh, many, many materials, but in fact, they are based on such strange uh, topics. And uh, it's interesting pay, uh, patterns when people try to, 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 to work with uh, uh, such topic modeling uh, tools. And uh, so from this, it's impossible to obtain some uh, new uh, knowledge about domain. But it's interesting that uh, some patterns uh, uh, spread in such uh, social science, in social sciences. 
Uh, and uh, next, uh, if to, uh, um, to say about sentiment analysis, uh, the, the same uh, papers, of course, they take uh, they take um, uh, available uh, sentiment vocabularies or machine learning approaches. Uh, usually, uh, usually created for general domain and without any, uh, without any additional additional consideration, try to apply this to their specific specific topics. And uh, for example, uh, one paper of, uh, on Russian, they uh, tried to um, to. Uh, to use classifier trained on general automatically labeled Twitter data by Yulia Rustova, uh, applied this to demography domain, to child-free, to uh, problem to abort, uh, but they take, uh, they took, um, um, they took uh, very general uh, classifiers and try to use this uh, in uh, classifying uh, uh, demography issues. Demography issue. So, in fact, uh, again, uh, non-experienced uh, people in NLP do not uh, maybe uh, can uh, uh, understand currently that uh, how sentiment uh, is very dependent on the domain and if you take uh, general classifier and the move to our domain, it's difficult to obtain uh, uh, good results. But again, uh, we can see that uh, People take this uh, this general instrument, and again uh, draw some visualizations, some graphs, and without uh, any additional analysis or consideration on uh, any. So, uh, so um, in fact, uh, we can see that this is uh, not uh, this is uh, very uh, large um, uh, interest from social sciences to work with uh, to work with. Uh, NLP instruments, but uh, uh, this is maybe for many people first steps uh, in uh, this uh, in using these uh, instruments, it's, and uh, in fact many problems when they try to uh, to, to to adapt not adapt simply use use these available instruments uh, uh, to their uh, to their problems. Uh, and uh, in fact, in NLP and NLP uh, conferences, uh, these uh, papers are very strange because it's clear that um, uh, not uh, no knowledge uh, can be obtained from this analysis. And uh, so, my question, uh, research question, is, uh, is uh, following that maybe uh, when uh, people in domain try to um, analyze uh, some. Uh, Opinions of people, maybe they should not use uh, topic modeling um, uh, approaches. Maybe here more relevant the so called uh, aspects, uh, aspects analysis uh, as in sentiment uh, analysis, as, as in, as in uh, the best sentiment analysis, because uh, maybe here uh, the most interesting uh, uh, contradictory, uh, contradictory opinions. And uh, so we do not need to extract frequent uh, topics, but uh, topics uh, which um, uh, which uh, are discussed from different uh, sentiment positions. Um, so maybe it's not even not uh, relevant topic modeling uh, instrument, but uh, uh, other instruments should be used. Uh, for example, this is my last. Uh, slide that uh, uh, if we can consider COVID ethics uh, or topics, so uh, maybe uh, uh, in data such words and uh, Italy or China or uh, United States or some other are frequent, uh, but in fact, uh, we most uh, contradictory opinions are concentrated. Uh, uh, around other other topics such as mask, uh, quarantine, uh, vaccine, and uh, some, some other models. Maybe some uh, not topic modeling instrument uh, or other instruments are more relevant to these uh, studies uh, from uh, social science. Um, so, uh, so in topic modeling, uh, the most frequent topic death, but death is 
uh, negative always, but uh, contradictory opinions can be about uh, about this uh, this uh, aspects of uh, COVID uh, uh, discussion. Uh, so thank you for your attention for my small survey of uh, such uh, papers. Um, okay. Thank you. If uh, again. May I have a very short, uh, yeah, very short, uh, if I may, it's not exactly a, qu a clarification question. Um, I'm very sorry that you got such stupid papers for, rev for reviews from sociologists. Um, um, but I, I would, if I may, I would also proceed from this to raise another question for the future discussion, uh, which is, I, I completely sort of, miss it in, in my presentation because it was on a different topic. And this question is that social scientists and psychologists need from NLP sort of ready-made tools that can help them measure whatever is yeah. measured, such as sentiment or topic structure, and then use them as variables in their social sociological models. And so the question for discussion is, are there any reliable instruments and how we can um, um, can, can uh, um, make a dialogue, uh, um, a conversation between those who develop these instruments and those who use them so that those who develop know what to develop and those who use know how to use this. Mm -hmm. So and I shut up. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, so, it's a very important question. Yeah. We'll, uh, so we, we'll leave, maybe we we'll leave it there for uh, the, the the discussion at the end, and yeah, this uh, is... we move uh, to well, in theory, Oronets. Well, you are there at least. Uh, Tatiana Ivinova, head of the uh, Rust Profiling Lab, and also with a uh, background in uh, philology like uh, like a Polina. So whenever you want, uh, Tatiana. Hi, <clears throat> good evening, dear colleagues. Uh, it's glad to hear you all. Unfortunately, not in person, but still, I'm happy to, uh, to meet you here. So I'm going to share my screen. I cannot share my screen, unfortunately. Olga, are you here? Hello, Olga. No, Olga doesn't seem to be here. Okay, well, you, you can send uh, Polina your presentation and uh, Polina will, will share it. Yeah. And uh, yes, I mean, we yeah, have to good. solve the problems. Mm, okay, so I'll start uh, just, um, I'm in the process of sending. I'm, I start my topic, uh, my short um, report is devoted to the problem of um, uh, uh, gender prediction. Uh, previous talks were mostly about um, personality prediction, but my topic is uh, gender prediction. Uh, as all of you know, my topic is uh, gender prediction is one of um, uh, the uh, subtasks of uh, authorship uh, profiling, which is the problem of uh, inferring um, some. Uh, uh, some traits of the author of the texts. And uh, I uh, have made a short scope review, review from uh, of papers uh, indexed in uh, Scopus. And I have uh, found uh, that uh, uh, gender prediction is uh, the most, uh, is the most popular task here. 
and uh, uh, there, there are a lot of papers dedicated to gender prediction. Uh, so just a moment. Mm -hmm. I'm sending my presentation. Okay. Uh, so uh, gender prediction is a very popular task. And uh, I shall say that it's uh, just um, uh, more popular than personality prediction. But what we often uh, uh, predict, we often predict biological gender. It's a typical outcome in uh, prediction in this task. And uh, a lot of papers uh, really uh, report high accuracies of uh, gender prediction from texts. But can we trust them? Is it really uh, an easy task to predict gender from texts? Thank you. Thank you very much, Alina. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, high accuracy are often reported, and gender prediction is one of the uh, popular tasks in PAN. Uh, I guess all of you know that PAN is a uh, kind of, um, uh, it's one of the most, I guess, uh, known uh, scientific event dedicated to other profiling, and Paula is one of the most uh, important organizer of PAN series tasks, and um, uh, good uh, results are often obtained in this uh, task, but can we trust them? Maybe uh, negative results are just not reported in papers. Uh, it's a nice question. So um, the next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Polina. So uh, <clears throat> humanitarian point of view to this question. Just a brief uh, review. Uh, sociologists and linguists uh, tell us that gender and other categories should not be taken as rigid. We really just uh, uh, see the gender attribution, the gender prediction as uh, uh, binary tasks, but is it correct? Uh, some authors say that uh, uh, what we make here, because I, <clears throat> I have a lot of papers on gender prediction either, though I'm a linguist, but still it's very interesting to make it from a linguistic point of view, but probably we oversimplify this task. And uh, high accuracy is, uh, is just by chance or by different uh, conditions that we don't take into account. So uh, the next slide. Uh, thanks to Polo, we have organized uh, cross-genre gender identification in Russian. Uh, it was uh, the first um, uh, kind of task in uh, um, gender prediction in Russian. And what we uh, were interested here as linguists, personally, I as linguist, wondered if we could uh, train our models of gender prediction in the text of one genre. Here we had Twitter, and then test the models on the text of other genres. If so, then we can uh, safely say that gender could be predicted from uh, each text with uh, rather high accuracy, and uh, that linguist who says that um, we should not oversimplify this task at all. But what we have obtained here is that uh, uh, it was very interesting and um, uh, very good result for me as a linguist because it's there are a lot of things we can discuss here. There are these results is that um, the results of the models uh, highly depend on highly dependent on genre. We can see here, this, uh, this is accuracy, that for Facebook, the results are even higher than for Twitter. But remember that uh, Twitter were in training, data, in training sets. So even if in cross-genre scenario, uh, we had better results for Facebook than for Twitter. But for essays, the results were just uh, above, just not uh, higher than chance. So it was very nice. 
for linguists just to uh, uh, to walk uh, further in this direction. So uh, we made another experiment. Uh, using rules ideal database, which is a uh, unique uh, data set, which contains a lot of metadata about others, such as biological gender, self-reported, uh, different uh, personality traits. Um, we have uh, performed experiments using uh, psychological tests. So it's not self-reported, but we uh, gather it uh, our respondents and uh, ask them to pass psychological tests. Uh, for some others, there are uh, a lot of tests, not just one, but several uh, test scores are available, including their texts. Several texts from the other, not just one text, but several texts are available. So this database is freely available. You can Google it and uh, look Mm, just uh, for uh, the, the text and better data, what you want for your own research. It's, um, it's very nice uh, tool, I guess, for uh, people uh, who are doing NLP and in linguistics uh, and uh, um, NLP and uh, trying to uh, uh, trying to explain something from linguistic humanitarian point of view, I guess. So uh, just a um, um, few uh, results of the experiment. What I was trying to do. Uh, I um, selected from this Rus Idolac database uh, texts uh, by the same authors, uh, two texts with uh, control for genera, um, exactly picture description and letter to a friend. Each author wrote two texts. Uh, so, then I have uh, uh, biological gender information, it was self-reported, and the uh, psychological gender information, as well as another uh, scales uh, on uh, fry book personality inventory um, uh, tests, FPI tests. It's quite often uh, uh, used uh, in Russia, as far as uh, I know. So psychological uh, uh, trainer recommended us to select it. So what I had here, biological gender, psychological gender, as well as uh, 10 personality traits from FBI. I used PLSDA classifier, which is a quite nice classifier. It's a supervised version of PS uh, PSA. It's now used in uh, genomic research and uh, genomic research is close to dialectal uh, research uh, because we have here a uh, multidimensional data set and uh, linguistic markers are uh, inter highly correlated. And it's uh, quite nice to use this classifier for different um, ideological, uh, for different research in dialectology which uh, is, uh, uh, and gender prediction is one of subtasks here. So the results, the results was quite interesting. Uh, I used a different feature set, modern feature set, which uh, quite uh, often used in uh, fun uh, papers. Uh, it's uh, most frequent character and word engrams, post text, syntactic dependencies like uh, lexical diversity. And here I also applied uh, lexical diversity markers to post tags. It uh, was quite a uh, good the, uh, feature set, morphological diversity feature set. So different feature sets separately were used uh, to train models. Uh, but, uh, what I have found, models were un un unable to predict bio uh, biological gender in uh, uh, picture description, but in uh, uh, a letter to a friend, uh, the results for biological gender was quite good. Uh, let me remind you that the same people wrote these two texts. 
and no difference, uh, no stati statistically significant difference in lands between this genre were found. Uh, but what really surprised me is that uh, no personality traits could be predicted, at least from in this experiment. Using with no feature set was useful to predict uh, psychological gender in a uh, letter to a friend and in uh, uh, picture description texts. So the question I want to ask is uh, what do exactly we predict here? Biological gender or just constructed gender identity? But uh, this question is about gender, but uh, now I think that probably this is uh, not just about gender, but about psychological traits too, because uh, why have we decided that our texts and linguistic features of our text should be determined by our gender, personality traits, and so and so on. Maybe uh, there is no such uh, uh, simple uh, deterministic relation here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Tatiana. Actually, yes, maybe in the future uh, we'll have it to go in the direction that you implicitly suggested. I mean, uh, recently I had uh, to uh, register uh, for the NACL, uh, at the NACL conference, and uh, there were so many options with respect to gender. I mean, uh, that uh, actually I started out in, uh, if I was uh, falling in uh, some of uh, the cases I didn't even know. Okay, well, this is serious stuff. I don't want to joke about this, but uh, this in order to um, uh, underline that the community, uh, talking about uh, the computational linguistic community, at least uh, the main conferences now, at the time of uh, the registration, they include, uh, well, I cannot be precise, but uh, certainly there were at least eight, eight uh, possibilities in the selection. So, yeah. Probably this is uh, the way to, to move. Uh, I don't know with respect to conferences uh, of uh, other, uh, of your fields, uh, for instance, if it is uh, the same, probably. No, or, no? not okay. yet. It's strange because we are supposed to be binary people, zero one, you know, computer science. And instead uh, we have more categories than you that you are not so narrow-minded. Okay, strange. <laughs> <laughs> Ironic, at least. All right, uh, we'll leave uh, this important uh, uh, question for uh, later. And uh, we have uh, also a newcomer, someone you know very well, Sergei Sharov, uh, who will share from a UK. I don't know if, I guess uh, he can share. He has uh, the, the, the power from yesterday, at least. He could share the slide. Hello. And, okay. Hello, uh, I hope you can hear me, yes? Yes. Good. Do you have a smaller presentation to share? I yes. know that you'll be talking about uh, social and psychological insights from a COVID-19 uh, communication, or maybe, who knows, a miscommunication <laughs> as well, because the, the, there are a lot of uh, rumors, a lot of uh, misinformation in the communication sometimes. So, yes, uh, please go ahead, Sergei. Thank you. I hope you can see my slide. Right. Perfectly. Okay, good. So uh, actually, uh, I think that, that what I'm going to talk about uh, is somehow uh, similar to what Natasha Lukash Lukashevich uh, mentioned earlier, uh, the problem of in the interdisciplinarity. Because I have done a project uh, with people doing social sciences uh, on this topic. And now we are about to start a project with people in psychology. And there is always a problem uh, in misunderstanding how they perceive our tools and how we perceive what is important for them. So I will start by showing you a couple of examples. So the reason why we started this project on, commu on COVID uh, communication is that uh, the we, we wanted to understand 
what is the flow of communication? Because we can think of this as something which starts with research papers, right? You have a research paper, it formulates ideas, the ideas, they influence some kind of policy making, and then this is reported by the newspapers, and then this is shared by social media. So this is a fairly straightforward um, a picture of a flow of communication from researchers to social media and actually to us in the end. So the problem is that uh, if you look at this closer, this doesn't work and this doesn't work on several levels. One level on which this doesn't work is that the researchers, the way they talk is very different from the way people on social media talk. Because here is an example, so, uh, so we, uh, we have classifiers and I will be talking about the classifiers later. So we have classifiers and the classifiers, they detected uh, examples when people talk about face masks. And this is an example uh, coming from uh, 2010. So researchers write in the language which refers to, uh, to nanoparticles and instantaneous penetration levels. And then there is, so, so that's, uh, that's the way they formulate the research problem. And the conclusions are expressed in the following way, marginal protection against something, right? So that in this case, against the uh, coronavirus. And this was also the basis for uh, the decision-making by, uh, 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 by the governments, essentially, uh, because the British government recognized the importance of wearing masks only towards the end of May and at the end and the end of April they had uh, the following uh, official uh, line from the government so PPE uh, it stands for the personal protection equipment and in the context of COVID it means face masks right but now we also have a variation in terms of the uh, in terms of wording because uh, uh, here in the research paper you have common fabric materials uh, in, uh, in New York Times, we have a reference to clothes masks and we have PPE, but also face masks uh, in, uh, in uh, British government communication, right? And uh, so the other thing uh, which is also important here, and uh, for, uh, this is another area for which you do need a classifier, uh, uh, is that also there are different kinds of texts. If you have uh, research articles, probably practically everything which is coming from research articles is a kind of an academic text. But if you take uh, newspapers, for example, then what they have, they have lots of uh, various kinds of uh, text types. So, uh, so, so these are two examples of uh, texts with the function of providing a recommendation, right? And finally, also the other thing which is uh, which was important uh, for this project, we also wanted to have some kind of aspect-based uh, sentiment analysis, right? So you have a topic and what is the attitude for this particular text? Uh, uh, so how it, uh, the author of this text uh, uh, relates to a particular topic. And what we wanted also to see is how research papers impacted policy making and then impacted social media. And what we found is that there is a range of approaches, obviously, but there was an overwhelming support, even in February last year, there was overwhelming support for wearing face masks, right? There were more examples, with, so then if you detect, uh, if you detect cases uh, of face mask and, uh, and positive relation uh, to, uh, to using them, uh, most most of the time, uh, there was uh, support for this. Actually, one of the interesting things is how things change, right? So, because it might be that now there is much less support than existed before. At the same time, the other thing is that again, if you take uh, if you take social media, and here we have an example from Twitter, and another example from Reddit. So, social media is not uniform because there are different, so when you publish something on social media, then you publish this for various reasons, because here an example of a tweet and it, the function is predicted as opinion, and you have a request expressed uh, on Reddit and probably some recommendations in response to this request. And similarly, Daily Telegraph, uh, this is a newspaper and they report in one way or, uh, or the other about what is happening. 
right? So with the range, uh, so so we have a range of sources, we have a range of uh, a range of functions expressed in those sources, and that's not not a uniform, obviously one to one mapping. And finally, we have also difference in the approach, right? So then, then on the research side and on the government side, you have one opinion, and then social media is full uh, of opinions of a different kind. So, and this essentially what was what was the task is to investigate all of this, and it took uh, us quite some time actually to uh, understand what uh, what people in social sciences want in terms of their predictive power. Right, and what uh, we can provide in terms of natural language processing, and so this, in the end, this. So on the one hand, this is a nice and clear picture, but when some of the things, uh, sort of, I thought that this picture is interesting, but for people in uh, social sciences, they sort of thought that this is almost uh, uh, obvious, right? So, uh, for example, uh, so then, then we didn't detect many examples of public trust in government expressed uh, in uh, in uh, government publications on uh, uh, on the on the topic of COVID, right? And it's it's in a sense from the from their viewpoint, it's quite understandable because because governments can't question their uh, their own ability to govern the country. But then uh, uh, newspapers and uh, to much larger extent social media. They question. Uh, they question this ability. At the same time, we uh, we have again fairly. So we have some discrepancies between what government says, what also research papers say. But then, in the end, we decided to discard everything coming from research papers because the language they uh, express this is so different from uh, from uh, anything which circulates sort of uh, among uh, normal people. Right, but even within government communication, uh, uh, news, newspaper, and social media, we have quite a lot of variation. And uh, this, and so then the question is whether we can find some interesting results, right, out of this range of variation you can find uh, on, on, okay, across across different sources. And this is quite difficult, actually, to agree on what is uh, what works and what doesn't. So this is this was this was a problem I had uh, in uh, interaction uh, with the, uh, with the uh, social scientists, right? And then the other thing which we also wanted to do, we also wanted to move a bit closer to personality profiling because if you have social media texts, right? Then, uh, then some text. So then, then this this only captures. So then this column, it captures primarily those who produce social media texts. We selected only. Uh, so then, then this was coming. The sources are Twitter and Reddit, and we only selected personal messages. So uh, we uh, we removed all retweets. Right. So then, 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 then what? So so this essentially means that this column corresponds to what people write, yes? But then what was interesting, and this was missing in this kind of study, is what people think and how they're different. And this is the context in which we decided to start a project, a related project, uh, with, uh, with another, to, uh, in collaboration with another group uh, in Hamburg, right? And they have done, in parallel to our study, they have done another study. So what essentially they wanted to do, they wanted to investigate to what extent uh, public opinion changed or the psychological state actually of, uh, of people communicating on Twitter, it changed uh, by, uh, by me. so then, then how they, uh, they, were, they wanted to do this is by detection of the intrinsic desires, uh, uh, how they frame this from social media texts and the way uh, uh, they predicted the intrinsic desires was according to two frameworks. And the reason for choosing the two frameworks is because there was a test available in German. This is a German group. So uh, they played uh, with uh, German uh, uh, psychological tests and also with, uh, with the German tweets. So one is about uh, the intrinsic motives, right? So according to uh, to a particular theory, uh, uh, they uh, uh, they used 
is that obviously we all want some kind of power, we all want love, and we want to achieve something, and the, there is the, uh, the basic intrinsic desire for freedom. And also the, then when we act in the society, then uh, there are st such things as self-regulatory enactment dimensions, right? So then we can uh, regulate positive affect, we, we are sensitive, to some positive incentives and exactly uh, in exactly the same way for the negative in incentives. But then uh, some people do this in different ways and what they want, so, so first of all, they have a training set and uh, this training set is considerably bigger than uh, what was discussed before. For example, for Russian, there were examples of uh, several hundred participants and clearly in this case, uh, they had about 1500 participants and uh, uh, the task for the participants was to provide descriptions of uh, some scenes and some reasoning why they interpret scenes in one way or the other. And uh, so they were, uh, they were responding to pictures and uh, questions and uh, overall uh, the length of each answer was roughly of the length of a tweet uh, in Twitter. So, uh, so, and they, uh, they uh, had several um, questions and several answers per participant. So uh, they had sufficient amount of data in order to train their model. And what they did, they, uh, uh, so, so they did a t-test on the prediction strength, right? So, uh, so uh, if, you, uh, if you have a bird-like model, then on the top of the model uh, you have soft marks and by the strength of the maximum uh, for, the, uh, for the soft marks function, you sort of predict the, so then, then this was their model for predicting the, uh, on the one hand, the dominant motif and the strength of this dominant motif. Uh, or, and, the, and in exactly the same way for the strength of, uh, of uh, uh, self-regulation. Right. And what they found, and they compared data from March 2019, uh, I think March, May, March, May 2019 to March, May 2020. And what they, uh, and they found some differences, right? So uh, you can see that power increased and according to the distribution of uh, t-test comparison, this, uh, this was a significant change, right? And uh, in exactly the same way, uh, the uh, so the, the dominant freedom as the dominant motive, it, uh, it actually fell quite considerably. And in exactly the same way, also the incentive to the negative effects, it was, uh, it was quite strongly affected, right? So this is again, all, this is quite nice. So they claim that this is related to some intrinsic, uh, intrinsic motives and the change in the intrinsic motives with the rise uh, of COVID. Uh, but the question is actually, can you trust this data? Because, and this was already mentioned, there is a difference in genres because uh, the prediction model was built on the basis of descriptions of pictures. So this is, this is a narrative genre. And then, uh, and, and the prediction was done on Twitter without uh, regard for the kinds of type of texts uh, uh, they, uh, they used for prediction. And this led us actually to, uh, to look into, uh, into this future project, which combines the strength of our text classification with their text classification. So that, uh, so on the one hand, in Twitter, you have different kinds of texts, right? And then uh, you can talk about predicting uh, advice or reference information or propaganda or, uh, or informative reporting. And also you can, uh, you can talk about predicting various linguistic properties. So then whether text expresses emotions or whether there is presence of uh, any evidential relations or the, the other property is for example, readability. And then we can, we can in principle predict uh, whatever uh, is, uh, uh, whatever kind of personal profiles can be obtained from the social media posts. Uh, provided that uh, we have enough data. The other question is also about the languages. So, uh, in, uh, uh, so in presentations uh, we heard today, this was primarily about Russian, Russian, Russian. Then obviously we have quite a lot of data for English. 
but to what extent this corresponds to uh, what we have in other languages, such as Russian, right? So first of all, we have different theories. Second, uh, we, have, uh, 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 we have different data collection procedures, but also quite importantly, we also have different cultures. And what is important in the Anglo-Saxon culture might be uh, not so important in the German-speaking culture. And, uh, and then it will be quite different from, uh, uh, from the Russian culture. So in this case, so it would be nice to have uh, various bits. So for, first of all, demographic uh, information, then uh, uh, some of the uh, personal traits, uh, such as intrinsic motives, which they have. And for Big Five and for Myers Briggs, there are also training data. So you can try this, but then the question is about comparison, right? And then also worldviews are quite important. And there is, so this is, this is what I know from, from the social scientists, that there is a correlation between political views and the medical, uh, and, and, and medical opinions of people. So for, for example, uh, the political stance, uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it is known that in the United States, uh, in, uh, in counties uh, who voted for Trump, uh, the rate of mask use is uh, lower, and uh, it is also reflected in the higher COVID death rate uh, in those areas. So, so obviously, you can you can find some kind of correlation between different kinds of values and worldviews. And also, uh, people talk about biases, and then the question is whether we can predict to what extent the person will be biased. And then, on this basis, so this is the ideal case. We would like to predict what makes which readers forward what, right? So then, then you, have, uh, you have a Facebook post and not everyone obviously trusts it, right? But then some people do trust them and then they forward them. And then what makes uh, whom are forwarding this? That's, that's, that's an open research question. And we would like to explore this cross-culturally. The problem is precisely that you can't have one and the same model which works across cultures. And the other thing is that social scientists they're primarily interested in the society, in the uh, in I, I mean that, that in uh, in the entire society or in a meaningful section of the society. The problem is that we are getting data from social media, and not everyone is active on social media. Even fewer people they are uh, uh, they share data via social media. And in this respect, if we focus and the current focus of research in social sciences and in psychology is primarily on getting data from social media. And this is a problematic thing because, because we are actually dealing with a small section of the society. So I, that's, that's it. I was asked to be a uh, short, uh, so I think that I can, I can stop sharing the screen. Right. And Thank you. Thanks, uh, Sergey. So usually when I, when I attend, uh, you know, round tables, uh, the, there is always what I see if uh, the, the, the chair of the round table uh, tries to be nice with the presenters, but is a bad chair, at the end, there is no time for discussion. So this is uh, also what happened to me. I try to be nice, uh, uh, I mean, to all of you. And, uh, but at the end, I've been a bad chair because we have uh, just approximately five, 10 minutes. I don't know the time uh, you wanted to stay longer. No problem for, uh, for me. Um, so uh, the way I would uh, proceed now, I mean, instead of uh, suggesting a certain order because of the questions uh, that were uh, uh, made by each of you, I will uh, give uh, the floor to the attendees and uh, they, depending on uh, their interest in investigating and in asking and uh, actually uh, answering some of the questions, uh, I mean, they will be the ones uh, to, to start. So please, if you are still there <laughs> after such a long day. So very, very diverse uh, topics have been uh, covered some very ethical, philosophical, and uh, how to, I mean, uh, I don't know. I, yes. I can say Please. maybe yes. You know, uh, my, my feeling is that um, in, uh, in um, these areas, uh, which are covered maybe in, in, in this conference and in dialogue, 
the situation is much uh, much worse uh, for example if we compare how it was 20 years ago and um, maybe it's it because of of of, of um, domination of um, social networks because while it was like you know you just used we we used ftp servers for example for our data and uh, email for, for our communication uh, we had uh, all the things uh, in our hands but now we are using because it's easier using social networks and and uh, we uh, the society we as a society we are giving uh, giving uh, like uh, driving possibilities to some companies and it, it 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 is very 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 dangerous and strange uh, so uh, uh, and uh, all not all but many research topics also became dangerous for example um, uh, it was interesting to list, listen tonight uh, about these topics but but at, at, at the same time i felt um, i felt bad because uh, I, I under, understood that um, that uh, all many of, of the, these things uh, uh, could be used and probably will be used against our freedoms, individual freedoms. So it's very, very, very like that. Thank you. Ah, and uh, uh, that, uh, one question to Sergey: uh, Did you uh, did you started to uh, to to think about about this topic about uh, related to COVID, uh, because you uh, you was interested pers personally, or because European Commission is giving money for such things. No, okay, I can I can declare that uh, this project did receive money from the British government. That's that's for sure, not from from the European Commission, but this is this is actually one of the things we would like to have, <laughs> right? So no, so the the thing is that I'm a researcher, and I, so pr pr probably also Paolo will be able to answer uh, with his position uh, in this respect. And uh, so then, then definitely we have the Cambridge Analytica scandal, and this is just one of the examples of what can uh, what a technology in personality profiling I can do in order to disrupt, uh, disrupt the civil society. But at the same time, we also need to understand what is going on. And uh, social media uh, provides us with a way of looking into the society. As I said towards the end of my talk, actually, society is not equal to social media, right? So then we only understand what is, we, we have a window now to understand what is going on in social media. And this window is a bit narrow on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, so my interest in doing this is to do this for ethical reasons. Uh, so I want to understand how information flows on social media and also how misinformation flows. And then I don't like the fact that misinformation flows and therefore if there is a way of understanding, so if, if we understand this, then potentially uh, as a society, and you are part of the society, I'm also part of the same society, we can find ways of, uh, of uh, stopping this, or at least not exactly entirely stopping, because this is, uh, this is a, um, always a cat and mouse game, but then uh, this, uh, so we can at least find a way of understanding this and limiting uh, damage, for example, produced by a misinformation. At least this is this is my opinion. I I, I don't know. Paolo might have an, another opinion. Uh, of course, of course, a good researcher can can uh, can bring bring out some honey from a sheet too. But uh, I would be more happy if researchers would be able to choose topics of their research, not because of financial reasons, but just because of their interest. Well. Uh... Yes, this is a fact that, uh, well, uh, we are, uh, as a researcher, so we are uh, curious, uh, or we should be curious uh, people. So most of the cases, uh, we try to investigate the topics, uh, we, we are intrigued. Uh, 
uh, by and um, certainly if uh, also i mean uh, some money in order to have uh, you know um, phd students uh, to help uh, in uh, in this uh, arrives even better but uh, money shouldn't be the the the, the first reason uh, am i sure and i'm sure that it wasn't uh, for uh, sergey uh, I mean, either but uh, but it helps <laughs> I'm more worried about uh, what you said uh, because uh, I, I, I know uh, that in uh, well, probably everywhere, but in a certain countries more. And I know, I mean, I've uh, been collaborating with uh, many countries, so it's, uh, it's uh, difficult uh, to infer to what the country I'm referring uh, to. Um, nobody from uh, this uh, country is attending this conference uh, at the moment, as far as I've seen uh, the, from uh, the surnames. But uh, yes, a country, let's say in Asia, uh, I collaborated with uh, a bit. I know that uh, actually PhD students, at the end, uh, PhD students working uh, with the social media data at the end of uh, their uh, degrees uh, have the dilemma if, uh, I mean, uh, receiving uh, good money in order to track what's going on uh, on uh, social media, what the people say and so on, or the government or not. So uh, this is uh, scary. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, yes, this is uh, unfortunate. It has been always like this. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not easy. It's not easy, especially if you live and if you work in certain countries, um, I mean, it's more difficult than, uh, than on average, but uh, I would say it's a global uh, problem. I mean, uh, we could be tracked uh, I mean, uh, everywhere. There is a, a, a hand by Larissa. Yes, I want just to answer the same question because it's very uh, important question, even for me, because I'm working in a field that could be used in different ways. And if you're a researcher, you, it's, it's, it's um, impossible to understand how your um, research, how your work will be used in the future. And like, um, for example, all of our topics is, is about uh, automatic empathy. Uh, an empathy to understand the personality of the other person in empathy to understand the feelings, to understand the real impact of the message like in Sergei's research. And actually we don't know how somebody could use this uh, instrument. And of course we can use it for good and we can use it for bad and only on, from the, not ethical even, but for the government, for the uh, legal uh, policy um, norms, so this is a very important question, but not for the researchers, because researchers can't, uh, can't help uh, anybody just to uh, make a restriction on the usage of their uh, research or their uh, product. So I feel sorry about that, but if you're doing something, you never know. <laughs> Well, about uh, what uh, Tatiana was uh, uh, saying, uh, that we should move not uh, towards a, a binary uh, gender, but uh, considering more, uh, let's say, categories. Um, I know about a colleague that uh, Tatiana knows as well, that um, I mean, uh, here in the European Union uh, asked for a project just a few years ago in this direction. But the project uh, wasn't given because uh, the reason was uh, uh, that they were afraid that uh, this, uh, I mean, a gender uh, uh, profiling tools uh, could uh, later be used uh, to, um, let's say, uh, to social exclusion for a certain uh, categories. So, yeah. I mean, uh, again, it's uh, the other side of the coin. It's very, very difficult, but this uh, happened quite recently, actually. Olesia, yes, please. Yeah, if, if I may uh, say a few words uh, on this and, and more gen general uh, things. Um, 
concerning gender, I, I probably, uh, you know, probably everybody knows here the research by Kaczynski, who is now, whose latest interest in predicting sexual orientation. And so in some countries, as he himself notes, just as a by note, you may be sentenced to death if your if your uh, sexual orientation is inferred from a photograph so he moved from textual data to visual data because they were better actually for for some for certain psychological tasks so th there is an issue actually but i also wanted to like to give uh, a few brief comments on what i've heard everything was very interesting concerning tatiana's um yeah, a talk. I've been wondering whether indeed non-binarity of of uh, uh, gender and uh, different and lack of invariance of its expression are the, is the same problem. To me, it looks like two completely different problems. Yeah, it's a different problem. I just uh, wanted to show that um, we should not be. Uh, uh, we should not think that we can predict gender from each text. Because, as you know, uh, there is a, an actual problem. Uh, I'm, I can be approached by some, uh, uh, by some experts to, for example, it's, it's a typical forensic scenario. I mean, uh, I'm asked to profile the author of anonymous text. But what I wanted to show is that not uh, each text uh, convey the information about gender. If others do not want to convey this information, we could not attribute almost, we could, we could not attribute every text uh, and we should not do this. Not each text could be attributed in terms of gender. That's what I wanted to show. Mm -hmm. uh, another just uh, construct its identity. If the if the author wants uh, his or her gender uh, is uh, uh, convenient in text, yes, we can. But not each text could be gender attributed. That's what I wanted to uh, show in my experiments. Maybe we can yeah. talk about social social gender. Because not, on, not only about psychological, yeah. biological, but social. And, yes, and social gender. What uh, we can attribute, I am convinced, is social gender, not biological gender. But we are asked by forensic experts to uh, predict biological gender. And this is a problem, really. What I wanted to show mm -hmm. is that uh, to predict biological gender from text is not always possible. But some forensic experts are convinced that it is possible. And this is a huge problem, believe me. You mean like an apparent gender, not the real gender, but apparent gender, like apparent personality. So yeah, yeah, yeah. A different kind yeah. of apparent yeah. gender, but yeah. not the real one. Yeah. Okay. May I also com um, yeah, comment on, on what uh, Sergei said and also Natalia? Uh, yeah, I'm very impressed with the, the deepness the, the, of uh, Sergei's understanding of, of what we social scientists really need. Um, this is very pleasant to hear that there are, that interdisciplinary bridges do exist and that this understanding is possible. So thank you very much. And indeed, there is... Um, yeah, one of the tasks is to have um, to be able to say something about society or about psychological matters with uh, the, the the tools that um, that, that um, computer computer linguists build, and uh, in in this uh, context, um, the question of Natalia of whether topic modeling or aspects are better, in a way it has no, it has no ultimate uh, answer because whatever works better for, uh, for sociological purposes is good. Uh, if we can infer uh, topical structures of text collection, collections better with aspects rather than topics, then, well, 
any sociologist would be happy with that. The, the problem is that uh, mostly um, NLP tools are under development and there are some certain limitations of, of, as, of any tools and that the social scientists are not very well aware of those limitations. This is the problem. Uh, but but I, I've also have spotted that in, in a way the discussion has tackled two large topics. Like one of them is how to build uh, these tools that can social scientists and psychologists help measure their whatever they want to measure to use in their models. And the other is how do we build predictive automatic detection uh, models that are aimed not at explanation, but at screening, for example, or, or whatever, forensic uh, purposes. And these seem to be two different tasks. And the second is closer to machine learning, computer science, and the first is merely uh, sort of, in the, in the first, when you just build tools of measurement for variables that will be used in sociological models, this looks like a very, um, um excuse me but you know me and that, so that that this uh in in this particular task the computational linguistic tools play a supportive role, uh, supportive role auxiliary role oh, oh, auxiliary yeah so, and this is also a problem in terms of collaboration because what is interesting in to, to social scientists and what is publishable, publishable in social scientists and science and psychological journals maybe not so much interest uh, maybe not so much interesting for computational social scientists because they would say, okay, this is just a usage of a ready-made tool. And there is no novelty in terms of linguistics in it whatsoever. So why would we collaborate? Why would we sort of support something or supply some something for your for your ends? Do it yourself. <laughs> yeah, many of the things uh, we we discuss or we listen to during the presentation, I, I would say that they are related to, to fashionable uh, terms in our day, uh, fairness and transparency. So fairness uh, uh, in the sense that they're talking about uh, these tools, I mean, uh, they should uh, be fair in their decision making process. So they should be a fair, just to relate to what Tatiana said in this classification of gender that shouldn't be binary, just to make an example. But behind this, there is the problem of transparency. Transparency from, in my opinion, at least a couple of perspectives. So transparency in the way that data has been tagged because uh, we have seen, uh, uh, we have listened to uh, Larissa, the way that uh, sometimes uh, these uh, also important uh, studies and uh, I mean, the papers published in uh, good conferences uh, rely on uh, the, I mean, uh, students, uh, I mean, uh, of course, uh, nothing against students and actually they work for free. So uh, <laughs> many times uh, we, we, we count on them, but, uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's not so transparent, uh, this uh, process of uh, the labeling of the data. And um, there are variables uh, that uh, sometimes are not uh, taken into account. Uh, talking about the uh, topic, uh, I had the, the occasion to, the, the opportunity to collaborate with uh, some colleagues, uh, mainly in Italy, so misogyny uh, identification. So for instance, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Italian colleague showed that, uh, um, I mean, uh, what, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, we, we gave a subset of the data set to a group of uh, female annotators and male annotators. So what uh, just 50% of males uh, uh, label as uh, aggressive, because they consider that the other 50% was okay, maybe a little bit uh, over uh, the line. I mean, 
uh, but a kind of uh, humor, uh, humor, uh, you know, irony uh, was uh, was involved, but not really offensive uh, towards uh, the women. So just a fifty percent consider aggressive uh, this uh, subset of tweets. We ask at one not eight. In the case of females, uh, two thirds, so sixty six percent consider uh, these uh, tweets aggressive. So it's very important. Uh, the time of uh, the annotation of data, I mean, uh, taking uh, these aspects into account. And it's very important uh, if a data set uh, that has been annotated then uh, is a share uh, in order to foster uh, uh, research uh, on, on a topic. It's very important to, to say, to, ma to, to make a transparency of uh, these aspects uh, because otherwise uh, the risk is uh, to bias uh, somehow the, the future uh, research because uh, these available data sets are used also after uh, you know shared tasks uh, shared tasks are organized so this is important so transparency at the at the at the, at the time of uh, annotating uh, uh, ground truth annotating data and of course uh, transparency at the time of uh, the decision making so at the time of uh, classifying for instance uh, um, you know some other cases and this is uh, related to what uh, Paulina said uh, with respect to XAI so ex explainable uh, artificial intelligence uh, try to explain uh, this uh, many times a state-of-the-art uh, deep learning uh, approaches uh, that is true that provide they provide uh, many cases uh, the best uh, performance but uh, they are not uh, so transparent uh, in uh, in uh, in the sense uh, at the time of uh, explaining uh, why. Um, so there is a lot of debate uh, recently about if uh, the attention mechanism uh, that uh, could be used uh, that uh, highlight, uh, visualize uh, what uh, have been uh, the, uh, the most important words at the time of classifying, for instance, uh, if uh, a tweet, uh, if a message uh, has been uh, uh, classified as uh, misogynous or, or not and uh, there is a lot of uh, debate if uh, this mechanism uh, this attention mechanism uh, are enough so i think that uh, the, these are the two important uh, pillars uh, under those uh, many of the aspects uh, we 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 started discussing or uh, you you shared during your uh, presentation uh, could uh, could fall um i don't know if uh, there are uh, some other uh, questions or comments otherwise after uh, such a long day you had we can uh, just uh, wrap up uh, hoping that uh, we all do our uh, work at the best that we can and uh, hope uh, this is a big hope uh, that uh, i mean uh, the the big players uh, employ these uh, tools uh, in the proper way everywhere okay I will leave you with this hope. Passiva to everybody, and maybe after coronavirus is over, we'll meet somewhere physically sometime. Uh, physical. Grazie, Paolo. Dos vidania. Thank you, Paolo. Thanks, Paolo. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.